Hey guys, right eh? Chris here, middle of carpentry. We're gonna go through a tool belt setup. And, uh, yeah, let's see what you reckon, eh? Let's go through some of the uh, the gear I carry in this tool belt. It's empty now, and we're just going to fill it up with bits and pieces. Um, so carrying on from the other video about the uh, KRA system. Okay. So key tools, key items. Let's go through those first, eh? Hammer number one. Always place that one to the back. It's personal preference where people store the hammers. I find I like it on the back. I've had I've tried it on the hip a couple of times. I don't like it. I prefer it on the back. Okay, another key item. Front of the bag, front and center. Sometimes if I'm cutting regularly, I'll just pop it inside there just so it goes a quicker. But most of the times, I'm installed on the side. That's all. And then we have two. I keep a picker. Keep that at the front here. I've lost the top, yes. I've been in touch with Pika about that, so here we go. Smaller pencil like this. And what I do is actually keep a larger pencil as well. And I often slide that just inside. So I'll pull it out like a quick draw. Slide it back in there. There you go. And normally that one goes down here. There's a spare. So I've got that one. One sits inside the belt and the picker as well. So I normally have at least three. I mean, any one time. Uh, right. Speed clamp. Speed square. Square. Speed square. There's actually, with the buckaroo um, pouches, these ones actually have a speed square built in, a spot just for them, which is awesome. So it sits in there nice and snug. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't move anyway. Old Stanley knife. Slide that one down here. I'll show you why I do that. I'll show you why I go on that spot later on. And most common, you'll probably see most of the guys with an impact driver as well. Um, so, so in this case, we're going to use an impact driver for the jobs we're doing. So we'll we'll put that on our belt as well. So this will make sense as to the the related items as well. That's all the key items. That's the key items I've got in my belt now. Um, so we're going to progress on to the related items and uh, see what you guys think, see how they relate. I'll explain those as well as I go. Drill bits. As you saw in the photo, we've got quite a few varieties and stuff in there. Okay, bit of a mixed bag. Okay, there is special slots. In the buckaroo bags, I don't wear the charm, I'll send you a photo and stuff later on, I'll show you a photo later. There's actually little slots that you can store them in, so it makes it a lot easier to find in a hurry if you need to, for whatever reason. There's not a would have been good if there was enough all the way along that, but there's only a few there, so you can sort of see it. I think. Yeah. Punches, always handy, especially when you're using a hammer, finishing stuff off. Just have it sitting on the belt. One in the top corner. And that little one slides down towards the back. Spare blades for Stanley knife and then a razor. Always, always. Thank you, Scott Brown. Heads up to you, mate. No pencil marks. or crowbar or some description pincers as well 
Now removal. These tools relate to your hammer and your use of your hammer. Chisel. This is like a demo chisel. So you sort of get the idea. Not very sharp. <laughs> um, but I do have nicer chisels sitting in a Makita bag where they're actually sharp and everything, ready to use for um, for fine work and stuff. But this is basically the little bit extra leverage I'm on with um, for different purposes. It just sits up in there. So guys, that's all the related items. Um, so they relate to the key items. So now I'm going to head into auxiliary items. So the items that are, that are they're a little bit extra, a little bit of fluff and stuff that you can carry entirely up to you whether you want to take them or not. Screwdrivers too. I've got a, I've got a Phillips head and a flat head. Handy if, so for example, there's a decommissioned um, light sitting on the wall or, uh, or a PowerPoint or, or something like that that's a bit annoying to get rid of. If you haven't got the impact drive run you for whatever reason um, and you need that extra extra length on it too, the screwdriver's handy. Right there. Shifter. Alright, yeah, I think most of you guys if you haven't dealt with it already before, uh, good for tie downs and stuff. Um, handy for, for various reasons, just to actually have a shifter sitting on you. Um, and when you're doing corrugation sheets, when you're weathering the, the sheets as well. Snips. Now I know there's a variety of snips you can have. You can have red snips, green snips, yellow snips, doesn't really matter. Um, I just seem to always go towards the red, it's a preference. Um, and then I, I keep them on there, mainly, mainly for cutting straps of timber and you know, packs of timber with straps on it and, and etc. So that's why I normally keep them pretty handy. Pull that ruler, one meter. Um, this is the Empire one, it's entirely up to you what your preference is. Uh, sorry, this is actually about 900 mil, uh, not a meter. But very handy when you're trying to take a measurement with a tape that's flipping and flopping around, or you've just got a small measurement to take, or you're trying to line up some screws or something. Just pull that straight out, away you go, you know, you know your lines. It's like a straight edge. Don't have to have this, but uh, I thought it was cheeky to keep this on board. A little stability level. Um, it has actually come in handy here and there just to level off little things that are just at random. Uh, obviously, if you, if you just want to see whether something was was level and plumb, give that one a little crack. Obviously, there's only one way you can do it, but yeah. something I forgot in auxiliary as well chalk line I'm just using the basic Stanley one there are a lot of different types out there but um, this is something I've had for a couple of years now it still does the job um, it just takes a bit longer to wind in so that's here the difference between your gear drives and your standard chalk lines your gear drives will actually wind in a lot faster than what these ever would so yeah if you wanted to know And as for my tool belts and stuff, as you can see, I run a buckaroo belt, okay, a wide one with the uh, with the back support brace, okay, as a preference. Um, sometimes I, I get it up quite tight, quite quite high. Um, biggest thing to remember when you're buying tool belts, you will lose weight, guys. You will lose weight, so um, just keep that in mind when you buy your tool belt. So if your tool belt feels tight, uh, don't sweat. You will most likely lose weight anyway, so uh, it'll come good. I am finding mine. Is a little bit too big now so i'm almost hitting that that final run so. 
Uh, as for as for pouches, this is a new pouch that Buckaroo bought out a little while back. Um, I do really enjoy using this pouch. It's great. Um, and just mainly, mainly a lot of it's to do with the speed square, speed square side of things. But there's a few extra pouches, and this and these metal braces on each side are really good as well. So you put your drill on and stuff. On the other side, that's what I started with the Makita. I did originally have the Makita bag on this, but um, I've actually got the Makita bag on this side now. Eventually, I probably will upgrade to the Buckaroo, um, see what other pouches, options, and stuff out there. I am enjoying the leather. Um, it doesn't stick out anywhere near as much. Yes, it hangs down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it is quite comfortable to, to use. Uh, as for the pouch at the back, um, in my previous videos, I did explain why I got that pouch was for batteries, but um, I don't I don't really think that's going to be an issue anymore because I have made a decision. I am definitely going 40 volt, so spare batteries aren't I don't think are going to be needed to be carried um, just because of the longevity and stuff of, of the batteries on the 40 volt range, which is handy. So, yeah, if I'm up a roof, I'll probably find that that will do me nicely. And suspenders. Now, a lot can be said about the suspenders. Um, people prefer them, people don't pref don't like them, but um, I pulled them off the other day because I had to put a harness on when I was up, up on a roof. Um, so I just had the tool belt with no suspenders. And I tell you what, I noticed it. I noticed that the belt had to be much tighter and I could feel the weight on it as well. So it's it's interesting. At first, you don't think the suspenders are taking much for you, but uh, I guess just when you move your particular body in a particular way, it just lifts it up, lifts, gives your hips a bit of a break and stuff like that. So um, yeah, yeah, I think they're handy. I like them. Um, right, guys, well, that's my tool belt. And uh, what I wear, obviously, long sleeve shirt. You know, I wear a steel blue boot. Um, I've got FXT pants. Um, yeah, so it's it's all about preference and stuff, and what you like, what you're going to be comfortable in, is is key. So um, make sure you find something that's comfortable, and and look around too. Like I I took a I went to about three or four shops, try and find a boot that I was happy with, um, and yeah, I found myself reverting back to the old steel blues, which is something I've had much much. Uh, earlier on in my in my career and my life, um, we were working in uh, civil construction and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Hopefully that uh, gives you a bit of an idea on what I have my tool about. But otherwise, yeah, hit your like, hit your subscribe, and uh, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Um, and if you haven't seen my other video, I am doing one on uh, tool belt setups uh, for pretty much every trade, uh, which is the idea. Like I, I didn't want to just do a setup of, of my own. I wanted to be able to show people. Um, ways to set up their own tool belt regardless of what trade just to I don't know I, I think it's handy just uh, just a little acronym three little letters that'll help you out but uh, yeah be sure to go and watch that little video too about review did you enjoy it let me know in the comments and sections and stuff like that let me know your thoughts and uh, what you reckon whether I've covered it pretty good whether you need some more detail you want me to sort of um, you know, explain things a bit more you want to go into close-ups on my ruler or I don't know what you want to do yeah <laughs> get in touch guys shoot through comments I love that I love that feedback and stuff it's good to hear from you it's nice to know that um, yeah, there's people out there listening all right guys you take care build on legends and we'll chat again soon next week